in the 60s and the 70s, please pay attention. When great generals, those you call God's generals, these mighty men of God were, were trailing that entire environment with the fire of revival. There was a mistake that they made that we should not make. Africa, please listen to me. They made a mistake. They ignored the generation after them. They were focused on blessing people. They were on crusade grounds, healing the sick, raising the dead. But they left their little toddlers who are now the leaders. Remember, that was the strategy that the spirit of the Antichrist was trying to birth in Egypt. He said, we will allow you go, but leave your wives and children. Moses said, no way. All of us will go. Our future will go with us. Our support systems will also go with us. Let me tell you this. When the devil tries to stop the move of God in the lifetime of a man, when he finds out you have an unbending covenant with God and you will not change, the next strategy is to distract you so that you are so focused in the work that you forget that one day you will not be here. Many of them ignore their children. And so the Antichrist said, you know what? Give up on this prayer warrior woman, she will never backslide. Give up on this evangelist, she will never go down. But let us go back and pay the price for the next 30 years growing with their children. Now the Antichrist grew with the children. Now you call the name of Jesus, they tell you nonsense. I didn't grow with that name. Why are you now introducing it in my adulthood? The Bible says train up a child not train up an adult he knows why he says train a child it is difficult to train an adult preserving the move of god pay attention is a mistake now we honor the west don't get me wrong we we remain indebted to them for the dimension of god and the christian faith that they so lavishly brought to us however we are learning from that mistake are you aware that the average teenager right now, I don't know how it is in South Africa, but the average teenager completely ignores and hates anything that has to do with God. They love IT, they love apps, but you mention God and it's as though you are mentioning a typewriter. They say, get out of my way, I'm not interested in all this nonsense. It's a subliminal programming. The Bible says there arose another Pharaoh that did not know Joseph. So South Africa, my final word to the body of Christ in this territory, in this season, is that I want to teach you and give you six keys that the Lord gave me very quickly. If you hold on to these keys, I give you an assurance by the God of heaven that 100 years from now, Jesus will still be lifted in this territory. You see, quality control, systemic quality control is the key to preserving the consistency of products. In business, we teach that. Is that true? Yes. There's an apple drink that I love, organic, wonderful apple drink. I think it's from the U.S., and most times when I take it, they started in, I think, 1886. That was where they started the company. 1886. And they are still working today. They have, they have done well to maintain the quality. Do you know why? Because they created a systemic nature of quality control that does not depend on the individual man in it. We must create such a system in South Africa. Question, is there a system to make sure sinners are saved? Like I taught you. Is there a system to make sure the saved are transformed? Is there a system to make sure the transformed are empowered? Is there a system to make sure the empowered are preserved through character and humility? If you lose that formation, you have lost it. Let's do a one-minute recap over what I taught yesterday. The greatest need of a non-believer. Come on, talk to me, intelligent people. The greatest need of a non-believer. The greatest need of a new believer. Transformation. 
The greatest need of a transformed believer, empowerment. The greatest need of an empowered believer, character and humility. And when you are there, you recycle it back again. Back to Jesus again. It starts and ends with him. If you don't find Jesus at the end of your pursuit, you are missing it somewhere. You should find him at the beginning and at the end. He brings you back the beginning and the end. Are we together? Intentional and methodical mentorship of younger believers. Now you see what your pastor did with Pastor Colin here. Intentional mentorship of younger believers. Younger believers there don't just mean younger pastors, younger businessmen, younger politicians. Fathers across different fields, fathers across different industries, fathers in ministry, don't just collect seed from your sons, mentor them. Don't just do impartation for them. Teach them the road to the anointing. Teach them the road to power. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. Very quickly. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. We're wrapping up. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2. And the things which thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. Read with me. The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Can I tell you this? When Smith Wigglesworth, listen carefully, when Smith Wigglesworth was preparing to join the cloud of witnesses, he told Lester Sumro, he said, when you are old, do not die with this mantle. Find young men. Train them. Impart upon them. Today, we are privileged recipients of that baton because the fathers are allowed to train us. Many of you have heard of my encounter with Dr. Miles Munro, a greatly revered mentor in life and in death. I honor him even in the grave. Do you know when God began to show me that I was called into ministry, I wrote many men of God then there were no phones and Dr. Miles Munro was the only man of God who replied me back and written he said I believe in you I believe in this and that and I read his books and God guided me I remember I was at the southern part of Nigeria preaching in a conference that morning Literally, I began to feel a sharp pain across my chest. I said, what is going on? And by 5 a.m. Nigerian time, I was told that my greatly revered mentor had gone. But I said, no, even though he's dead, he still speaks. <laughs> we are the continuation of his impact Fathers, immortalize your impact by raising sons. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't just raise people who call you father. Raise people who replicate your values. Can I tell you this? Please, fathers in business, in ministry, don't allow these young people to stand up and just do what they want to do. Right. You are a father, discipline them in love. Teach them. Right. Love their future more than your reputation. They may not understand chastise them in righteousness not out of a wicked heart let them learn the law of process minimize premature manifestation let them stay until something called due season the casualties we have in the body of Christ today is because of some of these premature manifestations you're a young man here in ministry listen to me just because you can heal the sick you can prophesy does not mean you are ready for ministry can I tell you what you call pulpit ministry is only 30% of what ministry really is. There is a skill to stand in here. It's a very slippery path. If you, do, if you are not trained to stand, you can fall. Psalm 
South Africa, respect your fathers, not because they are perfect, but because they are sincere. When the devil wants to destroy a territory, he kills the fathers. And woe betides a nation that does not have political fathers. You do not have political fathers, the younger ones will become a worse expression of the fathers. You don't have fathers in ministry. South Africa, you know that the church in this nation is going through sharp transitions. Can I tell you, pray that God will raise fathers indeed. Businessmen, don't just die with billions and have children argue and have people argue over your money. Transfer your values to younger people. Professors, don't be the only professor you know. Raise people. Raise people. Raise people. Can I challenge you? If you are a professional in any area here, you have failed. If within 10 years of your moment of exploit, you cannot show at least two people who are becoming like you. <laughs> 10 years from the time of your exploits, if you cannot produce at least two people, even if they have not arrived, let's see how far they have come. Can I be honest with you? If you are the only one who is the champion doing what you are doing, the day the devil strikes you, there will be nobody to support you. This is why nations lose their treasures with the death of just one person. You can cheat death when you transfer yourself to many people. I pray you are learning something here.